Welcome in. You're listening to a daily editorial on the Cornell Economics Report. Corey and I are chatting with Doc right now. A lot of the airtime today to Corey because he is very able to talk on this subject because of his educational background, being a, a chartered accountant in Canada and a CPA down here in the United States. You know, guys, I, I saw something interesting this morning, something that came in from one of our listeners, and that was that in the UK and apparently also in the United States, governments are going to be taking a hard look at the balance sheet of banks specifically. You know, when my comment to that, to, to the listener's comment was, well, it's about time. But Doc, you brought out something that was really interesting when you said, you know, banks are re- leveraged maybe to the point of 40 to 1 or something like that. But the federal government in the United States is leveraged to the tune of over 100 to 1. The implications of that are absolute staggering. Your comment, Doc. Yeah, Alan, uh, we talked about this a little bit off mic, and I talked about the fact that you have the Federal Reserve with about 3.6 or 3.8 trillion on their balance sheet. I just read they only have capital to support that of about 50 billion. So that's almost 100 to 1 leverage. I have to get out my calculator to get it exact. But when in the bank bubble, they were out 40 to 1. That is 100 to 1. And my question to Corey is, how do they ever get out of this? Of course, people can say, well, they just keep printing money. But there's a point where it puts the actually the uh, shareholders of that institution at some tremendous risk. Doug, I agree with you. The Fed is only able to do this because they have the utmost power to continue to print money. By printing money, they're building up their balance sheet. Some people like to have a big balance sheet. I don't believe that the Fed should have a big balance sheet, mostly because right now the largest buyer – in the market is the Fed. We keep on talking or hearing about this tape. There's no way that the Fed can start tapering anytime soon. Moving forward after they do taper, whenever this happens, they are going to turn into the largest seller in the market. When they become the largest seller, who's going to be out there to buy these assets that they have on their book, let alone at the price they paid for them? but at a huge discount to market. They will need to start liquidating these assets at some time. Now, this might be a long time down the road. When you are as leveraged as the Fed is, you're in a lot of trouble simply because you can keep on printing money, but a simple raise in some of the basis points of the treasury bills and notes out there are going to take this free cash flow and not allow you to build up any more assets, but simply cover daily liabilities that you have. And from the aspect of, as I as I keep on going back to, they are the largest buyer, they will need to become the largest seller. But who's going to buy this? We're seeing other countries out there who will have to be the buyers not buying any more of these notes. They are diversifying, which is extremely important, which the Fed is not diversifying. The Fed is very focused on everything inside their borders. They have to be or else everything would collapse. They're going to need to wind this down at some point. I know that people don't agree with me in that respect, and I don't think that they will do it anytime soon. There is no way that QE to infinity plus another QE or plus whatever the Fed decides to do will lead to anything good because all that leads to is a more leveraged and larger balance sheet, which you can't sustain as as an individual as a company, as a bank, or as a government. And the U.S. has been going down this road. They continue to go down this road. Other countries are also going down this road. And that, I believe, is what is enabling the U.S. to continue to do this. As I said, eventually, these assets that the Fed holds are going to have to go back onto the market, and they're going to have to be marked back to market at their fair value, which is going to be far less than what they're valued at right now. Yeah, and then, Corey, theoretically, if the dollar takes a hit, their portfolio takes a hit. Also, you have all these pension funds with this stuff. Think of the carnage there. If next year, which I expect it's going to happen, we're going to see a further move up in interest rates. If you just get 50 basis points increase, it's going to just do tremendous damage to their balance sheet, isn't it? It definitely has to, and there's no doubt in that. And I think that's what the Fed is concerned about right now, which is why they're trying to keep interest rates as low as possible. And as you mentioned, Doc, the pensions funds are the first thing that looks like they're going to be hit hard. They're going to be hit hard, and it's going to trickle down into everybody. There's no doubt in my mind about that. It strikes me as being another good reason to put a portion of your money in hard assets.